What's cracking, everybody? It's Petros Papadakis, and what a special treat we have coming up next, the 1998 CIF Championship, modern day, an underdog, taking on Long Beach Poly. It is known as the Gritty Good Game or the Matt Gritty Good Game, with all due respect to John, his brother, who was an offensive lineman for Coach 2, and joining us to discuss one of the great performances on a great platform in the history of Southern California high school football is the man in Southern California high school football. Sorry, Jim Watson, the voice of Southern California high school football and one of the pillars of our community, a champion so many times over on the CIF and state level and national level. It's mind boggling and still doing it. And in times like these, we've got to have a little bit of high school football in our lives. It's great to hear from the immortal Bruce Rollinson. What's cracking, Coach? How are you? I don't know. We should wrap this thing up after that <laughs> introduction, man. Just call it a day. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Uh, you know, it's you know, it's different times, but um, you know, we're here to celebrate. You know, literally one of the great games in 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 the history of modern day football, and and celebrate Matt Groody good and his accomplishments and and that outstanding 98 team I had a bunch of underachievers that just uh kept finding ways to win you know it's uh it's really a wild time because I remember playing football at the time and watching the game on television and there's been of course and you've seen it throughout your life great high school football performances and we all remember them you know I remember them being a water boy for for rolling hills high but this one was on TV, and it was a championship, and it was poly, and it was something that everybody was watching. Did you have a feeling going into it, what kind of performance you were going to get from your junior running back slash safety, Matt Grittigan? You know, we knew in preparation that week. I mean, they had something like 13 to 15 Division I players. I was probably sitting on three seniors that go on out of that class. You know, obviously, Maddie was a junior at the time. And what people forget, the feature running back, who the week before had like 146 yards, was a kid named Junior Palacios. Yes. <laughs> now, Junior pulls an abdominal muscle late in that court, uh, semifinal game. So all week, we don't know if we're going to have him. And, and sure enough, you know, we tried to warm him up, and, and it wasn't firing. And, you know, now, now the burden's going to fall on, on Grudy Good's shoulders because, really, Grudy Good, up until that point, was pretty much featured on the defensive side of the ball. And then we would give him, whatever, 10, 12 carries the game, a totally different game in the 90s. We, you know, we were slamming it. You'll see it on TV, you know, eye formation, two tight ends, you know, some power eye um, when we get down to the goal line. But, you know, a, a funny story is one of the great high school coaches who was actually on the opposite sidelines, Tim Richmond, the DB coach for Polly, he, uh, he tells a great story. And, and, and Tim is going to go on from there and, and coach for me for about 12 years. But one of his coaches turned to him and said, hey, Palacios is out of the game. And he looked at the guy. He's always told me this story. And he said, yeah, and we're going to get a heavy dose of Grudy Good. We're in trouble right now <laughs> because that kid can dominate on both sides of the ball, which he does. When did you get the feeling that you were watching something? I mean, it's a championship game, so you remember maybe a little bit more than you normally would. But when did you get the feeling that something really special was happening? Well, early on, we had put some power stuff in. We had a wham play, um, <laughs> and we we brought the the uh, surprise the, 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 the tackle right. <laughs> yeah, we, we well we brought the tight end <laughs> who was in the wing. Uh, we brought him down and cracked him on on their big old defensive three tech down there, and 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 Grudy Good pops for about seventeen, but I sensed they kind of you could feel they were going 
what just happened, you know, because the, the kid that we whacked on is going to become a famous college football player. And we just leveled them. Um, I probably got comfortable about halfway through the second quarter, comfortable meaning I knew we were running the football and I knew that uh, Lou Cash could open up the play action. Um, a kid named Dustin Davis, the tight end, had a phenomenal game that night and money was on fire. We threw every trick play known to man at them. We, we had, you know, the sprint left, throwback to the tight end on a tight end screen. We had it, you know, every, if, if, if it was possible, uh, we didn't really know what YouTube was, but we pulled every trick play out. But then the defense was playing really well. And we had gone in saying, we're just going to bring the house. And if he gets it out, you know, which means that we're going to have to try to lock up and play more man than we'd ever played probably in the entire 90s but hoping to get to the quarterback before he had time to, to do anything. And we were very successful at the blitz package that night. What a game plan it was, Coach. And uh, a lot of people remember uh, Matt Grittygood as an All-American linebacker. Yes. I see. And that's All-American before there was a thousand publications. You know, when you, that's a real All-American uh, that Matt achieved. But he was a safety naturally uh, as a football player. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw him as a safety when he was a freshman at USC in 2000 when I was on the team. And man, he was like Troy Polamalu. He made up ground, you know, in a, in a wild way. What was he like defensively that night? And what, what was he like defensively to coach? Well, you know, we, we had coined him the heat seeking missile. And that's exactly how he played. And, and Petros, I'll be honest with you. He never maliciously tried to hurt anybody, whether it was in a game or practice. But there were a lot of practices where I had to take Rudy Good's helmet away from him because his opinion was, if I don't go full speed on every rep, I'm not perfecting my craft. And, and again, if it was the backup running back or the service running back, you know, he, he just got after it. And, and there were times when I go, oh, come on, Maddie, man, you just level that kid and he's about five foot nothing. And he'd just look at me saying, coach, then he shouldn't be in there. Get somebody else in there. That's not my problem. <laughs> Did you ever think about taking him out in the game? And there are certain points of the game, and you'll see it on the broadcast, where the, the old linemen are picking him up by his pads, and uh, he just keeps chugging along. It was uh, very dramatic. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you the story. His, he took a shot in the quad, and it was on fire. And, and I, I, it was right at the nine-minute mark. And the team doctor said, well, he can go, but he's going to be hurting. And I said, all right, tape it up. And I looked at Matt. This is a true story. I said, Matty, I'm going to ride your back the rest of the way in until you call off the dogs. You have to tell me you can't go anymore. I go, I'm going to leave it up to you to make that decision. Only Grudy good. He got this big smile and he goes, don't worry about it, coach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was a gentlemanly assassin there. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, well, you played about. with him, you know. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, uh, unbelievably special and, and doing great work now. Uh, coach Rollinson, I, I got to ask you, you know, the reason we really got high school football on TV and, and were able to highlight a lot of these young athletes and, and able to televise a lot of this great drama and competition that's unfolded over the years. Uh, one of the people that was really instrumental in that, and I didn't meet him till you know, after 1998 was Gary Paskowitz, who we lost uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, just what do you remember uh, most about Gary and his passion for, you know, being ahead on, on televising high school football? You know, a, a, my heart kind of sank when you when you said that name. I, I loved Gary Paskowitz. And, and how about him as an ambassador for high school football? But for the entire, the, every kid was important to Gary. A, you know, he didn't just focus on a Matt Grudy Good or, or a Matt Leinert or, or whoever. You know, he, he shared the wealth equally. Um, he was just a joy to talk with. And I swear, Petros, 
every passing league game. Every time I looked up, Gary Paskowitz was there. You know, not just at modern day stuff, you know. He shared the wealth with every high school program. He was a fountain of knowledge. But the positiveness of that man, you know, we, we all should learn from, from him. And, and that's, you know how much I respect Fox. And, and that's what I've always believed that Fox Sports does the best is, is, you know, share the wealth. You know, it's not just about the stars and, and, and they, they give equal coverage to every level of football. And uh, like I always sign off, baby, go Fox. <laughs> Before we let you go, you know, it was a Fox star, Matt Leinart, who kind of got this thing going, Matt Barkley. Uh, you've had so many great players, you know, Bryce Young's going to Alabama. So many great champions over the years and teams that don't win championships. You've had great memories there too. Where does this one we're about to watch rank for you, Coach, in, in your many decades of doing this? You know, he, he, on our football website, all the champion, all the games are, are, are featured in, in our highlights. And I find myself gravitating back to this one quite a lot. <laughs> uh, and I can tell you, when young players come into the program and they'll start getting a little bit of full of themselves, and I'll say, well, wait a minute, huh, big boy. Here, come in my office. I'm going to turn this little game on here. Okay, watch this guy. Okay, when you can fill his shoes, you can worry about how many stars you've got. You can worry about who's recruiting you or how many offers you got. I go, because he didn't care about those things. He just was a pure football player, a traditional, down-to-earth, modern-day monarch. And, and you know what? I, I still stay connected with Matt. He's up in Canada now, and and we have some great conversations and he hasn't changed a bit, you know, I think, you know, he's fishing and he's hiking and he's in, an outdoorsman. And like I tell him, I said, Oh my God, they, they gave you a gun. They gave you a fishing pole. <laughs> you probably beat the crap out of the fish when you catch them. Oh, the, the legend is still alive uh, up uh, north of the border. Coach, I got yeah. my modern day emblem on. I'm All so right. fired up. I feel like I, I could do the pride drill right now. Thank you for your service uh, for years to young people in this community. God bless you in this time, and we'll see you on the other side of this. Thank you so much, Coach, for doing this. Enjoy the game. All right, brother. Tell your pop I said hi, okay? He said the and, same uh, thing to me. Let, right on, Coach. Let's, yeah, let's sign off the right way. Go Fox, baby. <laughs> Go Fox. <laughs>